Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I'm using the Celebration Stamp Set, beautiful peacock today, to create a really pretty variegated look in the feathers of this card. And of course, in true Stamp Studio fashion, we've got some bling on there. I'm gonna give you some tips about the layering and about creating this bow and this variegated look. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. Here's a close-up of that card we're going to be creating. Isn't that variegated background really pretty? And wait till you see how simple this is. I'm going to create that image on a square of Whisper White cardstock. And I'm using the stamp set that's actually free during Stampin' Up's celebration. This is their largest sale of the year. And for every $50 product purchase, you can select a free item from the gatherings with a $50 label here for absolutely free. If you have a larger order and you're spending $100, you'll find here in the back that there are several $100 category products as well. And there are others that I didn't even show you. Fantastic sale, but it's only good through March 31st. The stamp set that I'm using is called Beautiful Peacock. And you can see the varied images that are here, and there are some greetings as well. I'm going to start with Pacific Point ink. I've mounted the body of the peacock here. So I'll go ahead and ink him up. And I'm going to stamp him in the middle of this square. These are the feathers for that peacock, and you can see this is a two-step stamp. But what I want to do is I want to create some variegated color here to get a speckle of the tones that are in the natural peacock. Using the two ink pads and a separate dauber for each color, I am going to turn the stamp face up, and I'm going to ink it up in the Pacific Point. I'm going to daub color all over it. What you don't want to do is you don't want to go back over it again to create um, a mixture of colors. So I'm going to load up the Emerald Envy as well, and then I'm going to go back in and just fill it in. There's no rhyme or reason to where you put it. Just kind of get it on there, and then I'm going to line this up. Lots of firm, even pressure, and then we'll lift, and you can see you've got that beautiful variegated tone of the feathers. Because we've actually gone over the stamp with this color, I'm going to recommend that you take your dauber on some scratch paper and you rub off all that extra color so in case you've picked up any of that Pacific Point, you don't transfer it to another project. You can wash these with soap and water and let them air dry and then reuse them in another color. I've cut several different layers of cardstock to do some layering, so I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to add some adhesive in those four corners working with the Emerald Envy first. I'm gonna line that up and then I'm gonna flip it over to rub because it never fails. I've always got ink on my fingers. And then I'm gonna do the same thing now on this layer and I'm gonna adhere that to a layer of Pacific Point. You're gonna be able to find all the cutting dimensions for today's project over on my blog. If you're here visiting from YouTube, I've put the link right in the description of the video below making it really easy for you to find. We're going to work now on the base of the card, which is a piece of Whisper White cardstock. I've already scored it ahead of time, and I'm going to fold it in half. I'm a fan of my bone folder for that nice crisp edge, and I've cut myself about 24 inches of the beautiful Emerald Envy crinkled seam binding. I'm going to wrap this around the inside of my card, and I'm going to make a tie on the right hand side, as far to the right as you can. You want to make sure you can get it in the envelope, but you want to make sure you leave plenty of room now to mount the image. So I start here. And just to give myself a little bit of leeway, I'm actually going to use a glue dot to cheat and hold this in place because I want to add a piece of the silver sequin trim to hang from this area. I found slipping it in there while tying my bow was really troublesome. So I'm gonna take a glue dot and I've got my paper piercing tool here and I'm actually going to mount this right over the top and I'm gonna stretch that glue dot out a little bit so it actually will fall on the cardstock to help hold this in place. I'm going to lay my sequin trim here right over that glue dot and now I'm gonna go ahead and make my bow. And I'm going to pull it nice and taut. Now you can see my bow is rather large. So I'm going to put my finger right here on the knot. And I'm going to pull this gently to make the loops smaller. By holding that knot, you won't lose the tension of your bow. 
while trying to adjust those loop sizes. I've got my sequins coming down here at the bottom. I'm gonna grab my paper snips. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a little bit of a haircut. It's a little bit too long for me. The next step will be to mount that image. I'm gonna pull out some of my dimensionals. I'm gonna put one on each of the four corners. I'm also gonna put one in the center. I have found when I mail my cards that they tend to sag when they go through the mail meters. Pressing my fingernail in the middle will help lift those paper backings for me. I'm gonna lift that up and that's gonna go here in the center of my card base, working right underneath that bow. I've pulled out the words from that same stamp set that's a beautiful friend and I'm using the Pacific Point ink just so the color will coordinate and I'm going to stamp that here underneath the image. On my original card you'll see that I actually use some of the metallic sequins assortment but I decided to change it up today. Let's add rhinestones. This will give you an opportunity to see it two different ways. The rhinestones come already with the adhesive glue dot on the back so I just use my paper piercing tool to help me lift them off the paper. So I'm actually gonna go with a large one today. I'm gonna to place one up here near the top and I'm gonna use a medium size one here and I'm gonna place one more here by my greeting. If the sequins are a little bit long for you, just come on in and give those a little bit of a haircut. And there we have our card. Isn't that pretty? So here's the one we made today with the rhinestones. Here's the one I made before you joined me with the sequence. I don't know, which one do you like better? Leave me a comment. Remember that all the products that you see here are available in my online store. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would like a copy of the catalog and the celebration brochure, I'd be happy to send them to you. Just leave me a comment. Thanks so much for joining me today, everyone. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.